Hey, Chris coming at you from the Mighty Decibel with another discography review episode. This time we're really reaching into the who the hell is that bucket, as most of you will likely not have heard of the band being covered today, Gotto. So born in a suburb of my hometown Toronto in the mid-70s, Gotto was one of those many bands that created a buzz locally but never was able to break out internationally. In this case, its failure to make the big time was self-inflicted, as you're about to hear. So before we begin, some house cleaning as usual. We'll attack, attack this chronologically, focusing solely on studio albums. No live or compilation releases will be included. And we'll include sn- uh, song snippets to show the change in sound over the years. Given that the band only had six studio albums, this will be a relatively short episode. Gatto's self-titled debut was issued in 1977, where we find Doug Inglis on drums, Gino Scarpelli on guitar, and band leader Greg Godovitz on bass and lascivious lead vocals. So side one is led off by the Bus Driver Blues, introducing the band's mid-tempo stomping sound with Godovitz's bad boy vocals. That's followed by two more strong early metal pounders, which display the band's uh, proclivity for X-rated, for the time, lyrics. Uh, The side is finished with a track that I regularly skipped when listening to on vinyl in my youth, it being a little light and low first for me. That said, in re-listening to the album in preparation for this episode, I found it to be more atmospheric than light, and not as bad as I remembered it. So flip over to the uh, the vinyl to side two, and we're met with two more strong, urgent tracks, including early speed metal ditty 12 Days, about the trials and tribulations of touring. So smack in the middle of the side, though, comes Under My Hat, a jazzy, soft, boring track that frustratingly became a semi-hit on Canadian radio. Typical, the worst uh, track becomes the one that hits the airwaves. Fortunately, the band got back uh, on the metal wagon for the concluding up-tempo metal of Hard Years, this reviewer's fave song of the whole catalog. So in conclusion, there are two tracks that I would skip, but given the strength of the other eight, and that this was one of the earliest entrants into the North American metal marketplace, I would say that it's a criminally underrated release that metal scholars should check out. I give this a 9 out of 10. Civius 3 return a year later with Who Cares, full album title humorously being, if indeed it's lonely at the top, who cares, it's lonely at the bottom too. So starting out with a short acoustic track, God of its crooning with violin support, it acts as the perfect intro to the subsequent ass kicking of Cock On, an excellent beginning to an album. Then we go all country and western, harmonica and full spit, and God of its crooning about broken dreams. <laughs> Strange place to place such a track on a metal album, taking the wind out of the sails early. Luckily, the side is saved by two more early metal pounders, including Sweet Thing, finding God of its celebrating a 16-year-old, offering her some of his lizard fuel. <laughs> Hilarious. On to side two, where our ears are met with the saxophone-led There Goes My Baby, sounding like a Stevie Wonder reject track. What the hell? (laughs) The band returned to the gutter for the head-banging Oh Carol Kiss My Whip before going full-on piano ballad for once again. (sighs) No thanks. The side is then completed by the threatening Too Much Carousing, the band sounding dangerous and proud. So yeah, here we have another early metal contender with some great tracks, but frustratingly adding three throwaway ditties in the mix. 
consistency definitely now in question. Fans were left wondering whether Gatto was a metal band, classic rock outfit, or a band in search of an identity. Fans were left confused despite the album being pockmarked with some great uh, strong uh, metal material. Uh, This warrants an 8 out of 10. A year later in 1979, the band hit fourth with their third full length, An Act of Gatto. A beautiful instrumental orchestral movement sets the table before So Walk On comes crashing forth out of the speakers, once again displaying Gatto's penchant for effective album openers, really grabbing the listener's attention right out of the gate. Still opining for commercial success, Godovitz and the company uh, provide a strong headbanging opening here that gets the hopes up. However, hopes is soon dashed as So Walk On is followed by the dreamy ballad Chantel. Once again, confusion abounds amongst the metal faithful. The size is closed out on a positive note by the slow rocker You're So Cruel and speed metal outlier The Verdict's In. Once again, we're met with sax to open side two like the last album, this time sign on the line being less morose and more effective in its emotional delivery. Speedy rock and roller Rosie Just Hang On follows writing the ship once again. However, the confused ones once again send a message that they just might be clueless by switching gears into a soft ballad called Take Care. The album is closed out by Work It Out, an introspective rocker, and then a quick revisit of opening instrumental Anacana Panacana. So here we had a situation where a promising band was going backwards, still providing some glimmers of metal acumen, but in disturbingly lesser amounts from albums one to three. They were at risk of losing the hardcore metal fan base with their consistent mixing of the message between metal and ballad, jazz, and other esoteric musical realms. I give this a 7 out of 10. Two years hence, the threesome issued Pretty Bad Boys, finding the boys asleep at the wheel. Fully expecting to be met with a frustrating mix of metal and wimpem, here Gatto instead tried to embrace the radio, providing zero examples of metal. Instead, we get a bunch of boring, mid-paced rockers that fail to engage while throwing in a pathetic Calypso pop ditty and some radio-hugging fair just to poke us metalheads in the eye. So, of course, the title track became a minor hit on Canadian radio just to piss us off even more. (laughs) So, yeah, this album became the straw that broke the metal bass's back, an album I never play, which delivered not one track from my Gatto playlist. Truly a disappointing entry into the band's discography that I would give a grading of 5 out of 10. Leave best alone. Forget about cigarettes. They only give you cancer. Forget assassination. That is not the answer. Forget about your manhood. 
forget about philosophy Just within another man's street Right Forget about your work day Lonely bring you down Forget about your teachers You were the class clown Forget about religion Probably sensing the fan faces drift, the band issued a double live album called Best Seat in the House later in 1981, smartly packing the set list with their best hard rock and metal material. This is definitely worth seeking out if you're one of those who loves 70s and 80s live albums. However, this proved to be too little too late as the band was dissolved after some subsequent touring in 1982. The band would be resurrected every once in a while for single dates, but wouldn't issue another studio album until a full decade later in 1992 with King of Broken Hearts. So why they bothered isn't clear, as King of Broken Hearts hit with a thud, its mix of boring ballads, soft and dull rockers being out of place for the 90s. Totally lacking in heft and power, this album drove home once and for all that God Own the Metal Band was a distant memory. So let me save you some time in investigating this overlong, ultimately forgettable release and pointing you to check out Just Don't Know, an 80s-style keyboard-backed rocker that was out of place for the 90s, and Dreams of New York City, a status quo-type uh, low-calorie boogie rocker. Otherwise, save yourself the time and steer clear of this. Turn out the lights, the party's over. 4 out of 10. Clueless Trio were largely inactive for the next decade, other than some intermittent gigs in their local Ontario haunts, until 2003, which saw the issuance of their sixth and final full-length, Kings of the Stoned Age. Expectations when approaching this one were appropriately low, but when play is pushed, what we get is a consistently rocking affair, uh, something totally unexpected. Sure, it's not the old school metal of old, but this mix of ZZ Top style mid-tempo rockers, ACDC style boogie fits, and rock and rollers is a totally valid approach for these aging lads to take so late in the game. Fave tracks here, uh, opener Help Me, and the hard rocking Gas Money and Cigarettes. So I'm mighty pleased to see that this record caps off the band's discography, bringing some validity back to the good name Gatto. I give this a 6.5. Some rare gigs were subsequently played, but the band was finally put to rest for good in 2018. So there you have it, a review of the inconsistent discography of Toronto's fave bar band, Gatto. So thanks for joining us, and remember to check in every Monday for our new release Mondays. Tuesdays we have our curated playlists in 40 minutes, 
Wednesdays and Thursdays, we have our written album and live reviews. And the odd Thursdays, we throw in our best of top tens, that sort of thing. You know where to go www.themightydecibel.com. Have a great one, eh?